guys, Connie from Faff Designs. Welcome to my weekly YouTube videos. In the video today, I'm gonna to flip this piece behind. It's actually from my mum for her cottage, and she wants quite a specific colour on it. So I'm gonna use the Colour Lab on the Dixie Well website to get a match, and then we are gonna flip it. Okay, first things first, as always, I gave this a really good clean. This is actually my second pass with the cleaning products because she was a filthy one. Um, I actually cleaned this outside first because it had been in my storage unit for well over a year and the dust and cobwebs was next level. So this is actually a second clean. I rinsed it with clean water and the top had some damage. So I used my Festool sander to get rid of all those kind of sticky up bits and just make sure the top was nice and smooth. So I only sanded the top on this particular piece because it's a really highly shiny finish. It's a reproduction piece and it's quite typical uh, of these kind of pieces to be this finish. Um, and I'm not hand sanding all of those legs, so I'm going to use a primer to help me get some adhesion. So just before I primed, I made sure I filled those existing hardware holes. I've taped the back of the handle holes off so the filler doesn't go all the way through into the drawer. And then I'm just using Dixie Mud to fill the holes. Okay, so it's clean. It's been rinsed, it's been the top, the damage on the top has been sanded, and you remember me saying that this was a really highly shiny finish. It's a reproduction piece. It is a veneer, which means it is wood, but because it's got that really highly shiny lacquer or varnish finish on it, um, to break through that seal and to hand sand all those legs and all that, it would have taken me a long time. So I have Dixie Bell's Slick Stick Primer which is an adhesion primer, and it allows you to paint things that would ordinarily be pretty hard to paint, such as glass or plastic, metal, and also finishes like this, which are really, really highly shiny, polished finishes. Slick Stick is a water-based primer, so it's really easy clean up. There's very little odor to it. It's really, really easy to apply. You can see me using a synthetic brush for the legs here. So for all the sort of smaller fiddly areas, I'm just using a brush. I like to use a synthetic brush because it gives a smooth finish. Um, a lot of people use chip brushes for this, but I just find that it gives you brush strokes. So I use a synthetic brush, which is absolutely fine to use as long as you just make sure you clean it straight away afterwards. I'm all for breaking rules, but Slick Stick is one of those products that you do need to follow the instructions to make sure it works. So you need to apply two coats of this. The first coat you will apply, leave for a couple of hours to dry, Recoat with a second coat which needs to dry 24 hours before you can apply your paint If you try and apply your paint sooner than 24 hours you do run the risk of it not being cured properly and Basically not doing its job. So it is one of those products that you do need to stick to the instructions So you can see it rolls really really easily as well I'm just doing the shelf at the bottom and the very top of the console Basically the flat areas for speed with a roller the roller that I'm using is a flocked roller um, I just prefer these it's a personal preference with rollers some people like foam some people like microfiber get my words out I just prefer a flocked roller. And then back to the drawer, I just used a brush just because it had some areas that were kind of like a raised area of trim all the way around the drawer. So I just went back to my brush for this bit, but yeah, if it's a flat surface, I'll probably use a roller. Um, if it's a curved surface, like the spindly legs or the drawer where it's got that trim around it, I'll use a brush. So once I've done two coats of Slick Stick, I then went onto the Dixie Bell website to use the Colour Lab to match my mum's specific shade of green. So all you have to do is nav navigate across the top of the screen and find Colour Lab. 
Then I went on to Matcha Colour, which I've helpfully highlighted in the red circle there. And from there, you can click and upload a file. I used a colour swatch of the exact colour that my mum wanted, but you can use a fabric or anything that you want to match, basically. So you click the file on your laptop, or you can do this on your phone as well, a picture that you might have saved that you want to match a colour to. And then that drops it back onto the Dixie Bell website and allows you to match that colour. And if you scroll down from there, it basically gives you the colours that you need to match that exact colour to recreate it in Dixie Bell paint. So here it's giving me Farmhouse Green and Savannah Mist. They're two colours that I would not have put together to create this shade that my mum wanted. So it really is such a helpful tool. It saves wasting paint in trying to mix colours. And it also gives you a really accurate measurement of the different colours that you need to create that colour, if that makes sense. So if you scroll back a little bit, it tells you that I needed 70% farmhouse green and 30% savannah mist, I think it was. So that gives you an accurate idea of the exact measurements you need to create your custom colour. So as always, um, if it's a piece like this, a console table or something where you are going to see the underneath, I always tip my piece upside down and paint the bottom first. I'm going to paint the base of the shelf and the underneath of this because it's going to be visible. It's quite a leggy piece. So it's just going to give it a better finish and look a little bit more professional. So basically, the reason I paint the underneath is just so that it stops you having to turn your piece upside down onto a freshly painted top. And it's just the way that I always do it. Um, I painted two coats of Farmhouse Green Savannah Mix, Custom Mix, onto the base of the piece. Basically anything um, that was visible when it was upside down. Um, and I also sanded lightly between coats just to get a really nice smooth finish. So for a smooth finish, I'm also using a synthetic brush and I'm also using my continuous mister bottle with just normal tap water in just to make the paint go really smooth and give that really nice smooth finish. As always, all of the products, I will link them in the description below just in case you miss anything. When everything had had two coats on the underneath, I then tipped it over and painted all the other surfaces that were visible, like the shelf and the very top of the piece. Okay, so mother came round to visit and she said, oh, it's quite green. <laughs> uh, stating the obvious. Anyway, she likes more muted tones. So <laughs> I decided to put a wash of Savannah Mist over the top. So a wash of paint is just watered down paint. That's all it is. It looks like I'm painting it in Savannah Mist, but it's a very watered down version of Savannah Mist, which means it's not gonna give me full coverage. It's just basically gonna knock that sort of vibrancy down a little bit. Um, and I really like using Savannah Mist as a wash. It's very pretty and very subtle. And all I did is I added a little bit of Savannah Mist on a paper plate, added some water, mixed it together to get a watered down version of the paint, painted it all over the piece, but worked in small sections, and that's quite important. And that's basically so the wash of paint doesn't dry before you've had a chance to wipe it back. And then all I did, oh, bringing you in closer for a close look. You can just see here, I'm just working on the shelf only, and I'm spritzing it with water as I go, just because my paint is slightly drying up a little bit on the paper plate, because it's super warm. So I'm just painting it all on and then just rubbing it off with a rag or a shot cloth and it just gives that little subtle hint um, of, it sort of mutes the colour a little bit, obviously because I'm using the Savannah Mist over the green, it's going to knock that colour down, but you can do this with any colour combination. It works in a similar way to a glaze. You can also build this up as well, it's buildable, so if you did one wash and you thought it wasn't quite enough, you could repeat this process and add different washes, different colours. It's really good for a, a really sort of nice um, kind of faded look as well. There's loads and loads of different techniques you can use, but the, the reason that I'm doing this is just to kind of 
knock that green slightly down a little bit and just make it more muted. And then because I am a whiz with technology, uh, for some reason the part with me waxing this piece didn't record. I probably didn't press it, but I'm blaming the camera. Um, so that's not on here, but there are plenty of other videos on my YouTube channel of me applying wax. The way that I do it is with a blue sponge because I just find it easier and quicker. And then what I'm doing now is just buffing that wax. So I waited around half an hour and I'm using a microfiber cloth, a clean, dry microfiber cloth, and I'm just buffing the excess wax off the surface and that's what gives it a nice sheen. And then all I did is drilled some holes in the center of the drawers and applied some handles that my mum had already chosen. And here's the finished look. I just kept the staging super simple with a couple of books and a little chair. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you liked it. Got a little friend here. And make sure you hit subscribe to catch more videos like this one.